Awo salam sana ina yusulain ina kasi adino safari ina. I'm Wendem Yadon, otherwise known as Ras Ayadonis Tafari. Now, what we want to touch on is the point of Ras Tafari names or name and title. Name and title. Because I think certain things we have not learned the way we should have learned it, but now we have an opportunity to learn it. All thanks and praise be to the King of Kings in the name of Jesus Christos Etachin. We want to touch on the point of empress, this empress of phenomena, this empress thing. And along with it, this probably connected the whole goddess thing. And at the very outset, you know, I and I is the lover of our lady. And all of I and I ladies who recognize and regard the true significance of I and I lady, this Dingam Maria. Now this right here, as you probably already know, this is the, the Ethiopic legends of Our Lady Mary. Now we have two versions of it. This is the blue, the blue and the white version, the cover, and we have the, the, the gold and black. So one can order either or, you understand, according to their particular taste. There's a reason for that, but that's more within the society among the daughters of Ethiopia and among the sisterhood reasons why for the two particular kind of colors. But more than the cover of the book, they say don't judge a book by its cover, but what's inside, what's the content, not the cover, but what's the content of the book. This is a very, very important book right here because it contains translations of some of what are, what are called the Zawatir Shalot, or the constant prayers and the meditations. Now, we as a people once lost and now found Beta Israel. Over the past 400 plus years, we've gone through so much. Much of it we, we must recognize in order to recognize truly who we are in the sight of Jah and in the sight of man, in the sight of God and in the sight of man. And much has been done against the black man, the woman and child, the black family, the black trinity, the, the, the nuclear family, and just think about that idea of a nuclear family. But, but, so that families together, the, the power that the family has, it's like, it's, it's like a nuclear, atomic and nuclear energy, this energy, this creation there, this, this, this power and energy is so very important, even when you listen to what the world talks about energy and so forth and so on, not to get into the world of global economy, but to focus on the economy of the King of Kings and His Christ. And economy essentially means managing a household. In the Bible, we find the word stewardship. Stewardship. So when we come into Rastafari, first and foremost, there is a recognition of hierarchy. There is a recognition of hierarchy and a assumption of a command and a control structure. Now I know amongst many Rastafari, many would say, um, well, there's no leader in Rastafari but His Imperial Majesty, Karamawi Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie I. And in principle, that is true. Yet, Karamawi Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie I, our Godfather and King of Kings, he said that each one of us, his children, has opportunities to be leaders or show leadership. Because in I and I Father's house, there are many mansions. So we each have, have responsibilities. We each have certain areas where we may be called to be leaders or called to be leading brethren or leading sister. You understand, but see, the problem is when one's not born again, then you get the ego, you understand, then you get the wrong order of things, you understand. But if we're born again to the Father, in and through Yeshua HaMoshiach, the Moshiach, Jesus Christos, then we recognize that there's a certain fundamental order, there's a certain fundamental structure. 
Now, when we violate that order or violate that structure, we are out of order. So the point we want to make in this particular lecture or series of lectures is why the Rastafari sistren or daughters of Rastafari should not assume or presume or have one deceive them into an assumption of empress-ship, of empress-ship. Now, I know a lot of folks say, but this is, this is the way it goes. One's empress, yes, this empress, that empress, so forth. Now, we've talked on this before, and we've lectured on it, and we've actually even gone into the, the documents, but here we're going to try to present, we're going to present a more in-depth teaching on why the Rastafari daughters, or the daughters of Rastafari, the true daughters of Ethiopia, the true daughters, sisters, mothers, and wives in Rastafari should not assume, pretend, or make a, you know, make a false presumption of empress-ship. We only have one empress in truth, in principle and in truth. You know what I'm saying? And there must be balance. Balance is ma'at. So if I have an empress, then why am I not an emperor? I mean, and if I assume to be an emperor, am I an emperor in truth? Or what sort of, you know, what sort of delusion are we under if we assume such things? So you see there's an imbalance right there in principle. You don't have a Ross and an empress is like the Queen of England. She is a queen, but her husband is not a king. He is a duke. So that is in the same Im imbalance. State. That is not true to the teaching of his majesty. That's not true to our Ritua Hymenot, to the correct faith of the King of Kings and his Christ. And along with this, there's also another point in this as well. Now, we're, we're actually, this is, we're going towards the eve. We're not in the eve just yet. This is, this is Friday. Friday the 13th, right? And it's not the evening just yet, you know, of, 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 of the Sabbath. But the Sabbath portion is the 40th. In the 39th, we were discussing the death of Miriam. But there's an important lesson in Miriam that the daughters, sisters, mothers, and wives in Rastafari should make note of. You know what I'm saying? And this is according to I and I divine heritage and according to I and I, ancient Ethiopian culture. This is what we should be about. This is why we have to study and show I and I self approved to Jah, to God as workmen and workwomen that need not be ashamed rightly dividing or explaining and interpreting the word of truth. We must get I and I Father's house in its proper order. So we cannot assume things. You know what I'm that, that actually leads to the inertia, you understand, in the movement that we know as the Ras Tefari movement. Now, previously we had, we had, um, did this, uh, we have some notes here. Wasn't able to fully publish it, but we'll share this with the eye of them. And since we was touching on the whole devil's advocate, um, point, you understand, and how there are some in Rastafari that once proclaimed one thing and now because of outside and other forces and persuasions and influences now are persuading other things like forget slavery, forget the reparations, forget repatriation, and we wonder, well, where can these things come from? They come from false teaching, you understand, they come from false doctrine. They come from the great apostasy, the great falling away. And it's not so much the individuals. Remember Adam and Eve? Remember Adam with Haywan? How Eve was what? Eve was deceived. She was deceived. Where was Adam? If Adam had said, baby love, sister, hold up. You're not to do that. If he had stood firm, but he did not. And many of us as Rastafari, the Rastafari males and the, and the Mandem, you understand, we're not standing firm on this point. You know, the whole thing about the Empress, the Empress issues is very interesting because um, 
some would say, you know, how ones and ones can use this empress thing, you know what I mean, you know, um, you know, to get into the woman's, you know, get into the woman's panty, as it were, you know, use this empress thing, and, 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 and there is that point, because remember, we're living in a so-called uh, uh, culture, society, the Babylonian culture, the world, right, in which many girls, especially our black Ethiopian Hebrew woman, they grow up, like many of us, subjected to the propaganda of TV and media and movies and the Hollywood and Disney and so forth and so on. And they want, you know, they see the princess, the whole princess role, you know, the princess thing. And they want to be a princess. So when a bread drain comes up and says, yes, empress, yes, empress, you know, you're an empress. Every black woman is an empress, so forth and so on. You know, without the proper knowledge, one can be dis eased. You understand? And this also affects adversely our family. And as Matthew teaches that family is that primary structure is fundamental to our nation, to our Ethiopian Hebrew nation at home and abroad. So we must go to the right and exact. What is the right and exact knowledge of the King of Kings on this particular issue and on the particular issue of name and title. You see, Teferi is a name. Tefari is that name of the man-child, which becometh I and I surname, what they call the surname, because we are named of him. The, 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 the new name which the mouth of the Lord, which the king has named, becomes I and I name. Now, Raz is a title. And it's very important for us to understand that Ras is a title. So because we are Ras Teferi, we still have to grow up to assume that title or to take on that title in spirit and in truth. Otherwise, we're not taking it on in spirit and in truth. If we don't know the truth about it, how can we take it on in spirit and in truth? You understand? That means it's not in the true spirit. And then what fruits would come out of something that's not in the true spirit is what we have been adversely affected by as a movement for the past almost 40 years, for the past 40 years. And this is the new millennium. You understand? This is the new age. You understand? This is that dispensation. This is that day that the prophet spoke of saying, in that day, this is that day, he has turned to I and I, he has turned to us, his once lost but now found, Beta Israel, his pure language. So we all may call upon the name of the Lord, upon the name of John, the name of Yahweh. Baruch Hu, blessed be he. To call upon him with one consent, not with confusion, you say now, and not in ignorance, not in hearsay, what you heard somebody else say, but you did not study it, you understand, to find out if it's really true, or if it's really right and exact, and even if it's right and exact, you still must study it so you can go forward in that full confidence and will not say, well, so-and-so said it, so-and-so said it. You know, that looks bad on I and I who carry that name. That blasphemes. That's how we blaspheme that good name by which we are called, that new name by which we are called. So right here, this is, this is a little chart right here, something from the L.O.J. Rock, the Rastafari Order of the Church of Christ. And let me show you this right here, see how well you can see this. Okay, this is um, Be Born Again. Right? Be born again. Now you see, there's an order there. And what we did was line up the seven, working on the principle of the sevens, and working scripturally as well, and studying Ainai Ethiopian culture. You know what I'm saying? holy culture, holy Ethiopia, the Al Kidan Ethiopia. Now we're going to go through this uh, momentarily with the eye. So where does it begin? It begins, of course, with the new birth. You cannot be a child of God, a child of Jah, unless you are born again, according to the teaching of the Imperial Majesty regarding Jesus Christos, Yeshua HaMashiach, and regarding the Bible. 
There's no other way around it for Ainai is Rastafari in spirit and in truth. All people in the world are not children of God. Only those true Christians who have been born again are children of the true God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ. That's a principle right there. Some people will argue it, but they're not arguing it from a foundation of truth. They're arguing from their own feelings. It's not a point about feelings. You understand? In fact, I had to get over I and I's feelings about presenting such a thing, saying to the sisters, many of them who call themselves empress and are known as empress, whether to impress or whether in a truer idea or sentimentality or nostalgia of empress, but it is not functional, it's not practical, it's not functional, and it's not according to the governmental structure of the kingdom of the king of kings and his Christ. You see, in true Ethiopia, in imperial Ethiopia, there wasn't a whole bunch of empresses running around. Every cistern was not an empress. You understand? Know but there were titles. You understand? Know there were names. Each one has a name, and when one is of the merit or have received that credit, has a particular title of responsibility, whether it's honorary, whether it's an honorary title, or it's a functional title. But it begins with the adoption. It begins with that new birth. And this is why we point out right here where Yeshua HaMoshiach and where the apostles said to be born again, become as little children. Become as what? Little children. Not born big. Some of them born big. No, not, not to be born big. You, you, some of you may not understand, but years ago, when they say somebody was born big, it's almost like a way of saying somebody's born like big head or retarded, you know, like, like or has some handicap or disability or where the genetics, something didn't balance out. You understand? Not speaking against people who actually are born with these disabilities, but it's really speaking to people who don't have the disabilities, but just acting stupid or stupid, you understand, or foolish. You understand? But it says, a fool has said in his heart, there is no God, because this word of John is not in his heart. It's not in his consciousness or her consciousness, if you please. So therefore, you know, that explains that. You know, that's a closed cipher of overstanding right there. But let's go to the scriptures for a moment. And we're going to have to clear this. We're going to have to clear this, um, clear at least a, a significant part of this. Though this still, this still is applicative. You know what I'm saying? Although this is still applicative. So take a moment. If hopefully you've, you've taken this down. We've had this in a couple of the other lectures on Rastafari and um, religion or in true religion. So we're going to clear this so we can move forward with this particular teaching. All right? What we will keep up here, I'd like to keep this the tabernacle part, but we can deal with that again. We'll keep this part up here because it's still under the subject matter of Ras Tefari and still on the subject matter of the uh, Ritua Haimano. Uh, well, the Ritua Haimano. Alright. Uh, well, there we go. Yeah. The Ritua Haimano. Okay, here we go. Alright. Um, you could tell. So, we're going to begin with Born Again. Being born again. Now, what is taught in the scriptures concerning being born again and being becoming as little children? So, we're, we're children, right? Children, lij, lijoch, 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 yizare, lijoch, and negafrewoch, right? So, we're gonna go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew, right? Matthew's gospel. Matthew 5 and 9, right? Matthew 5 and 9, and we're going to compare that with Matthew 18 and 18 and 4. All right? Matthew 5 and 9, Matthew 18 and 4. And what we're also going to do is give the example of Miriam. Let's give this example. It's very important, the example of Miriam. You understand? Because some of our nine daughters, 
have the Miriam complex. You understand? There's the Miriam complex, not Mariam, but the Miriam complex. All right. We'll, we'll touch on that, y'all willing, going forward. And there's an important lesson in that as well. Very, very important lesson. And we're beginning to see the manifestation of what we have been saying. You understand? It says right here, bless all the peacemakers. Bless all the peacemakers, or the reconcilers, those who seek reconciliation. Actually, um, Bamarinya in them heart, it says, for they shall be called the children of they shall be called what? The children of God. They don't say that they shall be called empresses. It doesn't say that they shall even be called rases. You understand? Not at that stage. They shall be called the children of God. The children of God. Let's go to Matthew, Mateus, Wengel, chapter 18. Chapter 18 and, and 4. Chapter 18 and 4. In chapter 18, verse 4, it says, Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Now, there's an interesting principle um, there, and there's also an uh, 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 inner context of it. I'm thinking about um, um, Marcus Messiah Garvey and... and and the John the Baptist and what Christ said in, in Matthew chapter 11. In Matthew chapter 11 where he noted that, that John the Baptist is, it was of all those who were born of woman among the, the Israelites, he was the greatest. But in the kingdom of God, because he was offended in Yeshua, he was offended in the Moshiach, just like Garvey, Marcus Garvey was offended in Edamawi Haila Shalase in Haila Salasi the first. So although Garvey, like John the Baptist, is great, that offense. So that whole thing about the least in the kingdom, the greatest in the kingdom, those those teachings and those points. Note this right here. This is in the 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 sermon, the Sipkat on the child text. Matthew chapter eighteen. Verse one it says, At the same time came the Deca Mizamorit to Yesu, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Who is the greatest in the Mengishta Samayat? Who? Who? What kind of person or who is the greatest? And Yesu, Yeshua, he called a little child to him and set him in the midst of them. He called a little child. And he set that little child in the midst of them. And he said, Verily, Amen, verily I say to you, except ye be converted. In other words, unless you repent and have a change of mind, you understand, and you be conformed to the teaching of his majesty and the testimony of his Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, and become as little children. Become. So they already were big people. They were grown folks like us. But now Yeshua now brings to them a, a little child as a, almost as a visual kind of hieroglyph in a sense. As an example. As a misali, a mishle. Right? As a living proverb, so to speak. And he said, except uh, you be converted. So if you don't be converted to the way of the King of Kings and his Christ, the teaching of his majesty, and become as a little child or as little children, he says, ye shall not enter. You cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. You cannot enter into the governmental operation of heaven. Now, this is deep when we look at some of the um, challenges that we have as Rastafari and among Ethiopian Hebrews, and even in particular, the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. So we keep focusing on the preamble. The preamble. Ones want to read the book from the back to the front and deal with the bylaws first and constitution, but they neglect the preamble and the principle of the preamble, which is our divine heritage. And in and, and and Article 1, what section, I think, 2, where it says, it says to disseminate, to disseminate. What is dissemination? 
it is sowing seed. Uh, there went forth a sower and sowed seed to disseminate, sowed seed the word. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the, the word says, then cometh the wicked one and snatch away that which was sown in them. So is it possible that ones may have heard the word of the King of Kings and his Christ at some time, but did not really understand it and did not do due diligence to study and show themselves approved to God as workmen that need not be ashamed, that will and are ashamed? No doubt. But with his life, there's hope, and there's still the opportunity. What he says to, you see, now he, he gives us this key right here in verse 4. He says, Whosoever therefore shall humble himself, to humble themselves as what? As this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven, in the kingdom of the Samayat, the Mangishta Samayat, Bamarinya. And whoso shall receive one, whoso shall Kabbalah, Kabbalah, receive one such little child in my name, in the name of Jesus Christus, in the name of Yeshua, Hamushiach, right? What does he say right here? He says, in my name receiveth me. So even to receive a little child in the name of Jesus Christos is to receive Jesus Christos. You know what I'm saying? So you see how that is also kind of um, that, that, that hierarchy and even on a level as one mature, a kind of a command and a control, you know what I'm saying, or discipline, Discipleship and discipline we use instead of command and control, but we use command and control so that one can understand the true aspect and the true concept of disciple and discipline. You know, because he gives us the command, he teaches us, he tells us to go forward. It's his word that we meditate on and that we pray and that we conform to. You understand? So, so we all may be one. You understand? Know Without any. Uh, mixed up moods and attitudes, you understand, know and 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 so-called um, unregenerated or degenerated humanness, you understand, know humanness mess. Verse six says, "But whosoever shall offend one of these little ones, whosoever shall offend," the, uh, the word offense, bamarinya, it, it, it means to stumble. Whosoever shall stumble one of these little ones which my men or which have faith except as truth in me, it were better for him that a milestone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Go over that right there. That's, a, that's significant, my brothers and sisters. Very, very significant. He says, Whoa, whoa, yo, away to the world to the alam, to the olam, because of offenses. Woe to the world, because all these offensive things that we experience in this Babylon world. Woe to them. Yeshua says woe to them, and that right there should give us joy, you know, as long as we stay on the straight and the now, because the broad way leadeth to hell, leadeth to destruction. You understand? The, 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 the broad way. Stay off the broad way. Stay on the now way of the King of Kings and his Christ. He says woe to the world because of offenses. For it must needs be that offenses come, but woe, woe, yo, to that man by whom the offense cometh. Woe to that man. Now, what is that man? And, and the overstanding, that's the man of sin, the man of perdition. Symbolically, in, in Rastafari, we refer to that as the Pope. When we say the Pope, it's not just the individual Pope, but it's that whole system that, that the Scripture speaks about mystery Babylon. You, you understand, on the ecclesiastical and on the churchical, you understand, um, levels there. So woe to them. And you can also read in this a lot of, the, a lot of that child um, abuse. You know, a lot of this child abuse, sickening, disgusting child abuse that we're hearing about. You understand, every day more and more. You understand some really sick, but Christ, he already, he already has them in the sights right there. We have to keep this in eye and eye sights. Verse 8, Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. 
it is better for thee to enter into life halt, like limping or maimed, rather than having two feet and having two hands and or two feet to be cast into everlasting or eternal fire. And if thine eye, thy ea, offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee, for the eye, to enter into life with one eye, rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell, fire, or the Gehanama is sad. Take heed, Shema, hear, O Israel. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say to you that in heaven, in the Samayat, their angels, you can call them their extraterrestrials, but their angels do always behold the face of my Father. Yeshua says, which is in heaven. Now, we went to the whole, that whole passage right there because it's, it's very important for us to keep this in the proper context. You know what I'm saying? So it is to become as a child, to be as a child. This is the teaching of His Majesty, to become, right, as little children. Now, how do we become as little children? See, this is the Ligionette. This is, this is leading into the Ligionette teaching. Your Ligionette. Ligionette in the scripture is the adoption. The adoption. You understand? That's why repentance, overstanding Yeshua, the purpose of Yeshua, he was sent to save his people. Then we have to ask the question, well, who were and who are, in that sense, his people? And what was their what was their responsibility? What was their what what did Jah want his people to do that they didn't do? It's basically the same thing that he wants so called the lost sheep black people to do still that the majority still are not doing, but he's calling those and those who answer the call, this message is for you. So let's go to Romans for a moment. People say, Why are you going to Romans? Well, where are we? We're in a Greco-Roman society. So this is like raising the brazen serpent in that sense to those who've been bit by the serpent. And why did they get bit by the serpent? Because they were grumbling and mumbling. Who were they grumbling and mumbling against? Babylon? No. Against the ones who just sent to put them on the straight and the narrow. You understand? Because they were, not of, they were amongst Jah's people, but they were not Jah's people. The Bible calls that wolves in sheep clothing. Now, let's get into this right here. This is Romans chapter 8. Now, we say the main point about this is, is why the sisters, why not Rastafari sisters, mothers, daughters, and wives should not assume emperorship. We might also want to connect the same with why the, many of the Rastafari males you know, who have not studied and showed themselves approved should not assume rahship at, the, at one and the same time. You know, but we also want to touch on what are therefore the, 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 the holy and the imperial titles for the sisters, for the daughters, for the mothers, and for the wives. We're going to address that, but first we want to give a foundation for both the males and the females because it says in Christ, there is neither male nor female in the sense that this truth is, is for I and I souls. This is reaching the lost souls, reaching the heavily burdened souls. You understand? Reaching those who have been wounded, you understand, um, in, this, in this world, this evil world, and showing them the way out and the way to overcome, to be in the world but not of the world and to overcome the world by our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, and through his power. And that's the teaching of Ketamawi Hala Selassie. That's the teaching of his imperial majesty. So let's touch on, um, let's touch on Romans, chapter, Romans chapter 8. 
And let's begin from let's begin from verse verse one. All right, let's begin from verse one. It says, "There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christos Jesus the Mashiach Yeshua who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, but after the iris. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the iris." Now here, the subscription says, the new law of spirit delivers. Mm Mm-hmm. The new law of spirit delivers, and it makes righteousness. It makes righteous. So it's 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 once we get the true spirit, receive the spirit of God in Christ. You understand? And that means we receive the word, you understand, of God in Christ. And we start to grow in that spirit and that word of God in Christ before God and through Christ, through the Moshiach, we are counted as Adik. We are counted as Adikon. We are counted as righteous, not because of how we look, not because of what we eat, not because of, you know, what we dress or what we wear. This is an heretical thing. This is truly spirituality. When we want to talk about well, Rastafari deal with spirituality and not religion. Rastafari deal with spirituality and not Gentile or Romanism, Roman religion, Greco-Roman religion, or Gentile European misinterpretation of the way, the truth, and the life. Verse 2, for the law of the Spirit, wow, there's a law. You hear a lot of Christians say that because of Christ. There is no law, or they they speak against the commandments, or they speak against Torah or the Old Testament. Here, right here in the New Testament, it says, for the law of the Spirit. So there's a law of the Spirit of life, of life, of the liberty in Christos, in the Moshiach, Jesus, Yeshua, hath made me, hath made I free from the law of sin and death. So... There are at least four laws, two main laws, that are spoken of in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Most of them understand this when they're talking about law. There are, there are two main laws that are being spoken about here. There's the law of the spirit of life in the Moshiach, Yeshua, which frees us from the law of sin and death. And unless you are born again in spirit and in truth, you're still under the law of sin of chatiyat and mot. You understand chatiyat and mot? If you do a little study and research, which is translates to sin and death, but in the ancient time, they were Canaanitish gods. They were false gods. Very interesting, kind of, in a sense, that, that these are false gods that the people worshipped. You understand? In place of, instead of, like an antichrist, instead of Christ, Right? They were under sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. Which law was weak? Was it the law of the spirit of life, or was it the law of sin and death? It was the law of sin and death. Right? That's what people say they can't help themselves doing evil. You understand? They can't help themselves, you know, or or they get so caught up, you understand? They get so caught up that they can't come out, or they can't, they can't stop it. It's like, it's, it's like, it's worse than, it's like addiction in a sense, but on some level where it almost like takes over. You understand, and, and, and we've encountered and seen those situations, and a couple of cases among ones and ones who were, you know, dear brethren and dear sister, and we, we, we've seen that fall, but then as we began to kind of say, how could that come about? Because they seem like such iry, such such eyeliful as people say, but not overstand what they're saying, sort of people. And then you begin to recognize there seems to be a aversion to Jawur. You understand? Uh, 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 in compliance or non compliance to the teaching of His Majesty in spirit and the truth. They, they, they seem to be on this peace and love trip. They seem to, you know, like the, you know, like being saluted in the marketplace. Yes, Empress. You understand? Um, you know, or even, yes, Ross, and they, did, they had a title, but they didn't have a true name. You know, like Ross, Mickey Mouse. You know, like, what, what, what kind of thing is this? Empress Cinderella. What kind of thing is that? 
You understand that's fantasy. That's not the teaching of His Majesty. For what the law could not do, the law of sin and death could not do, in that it was weak. It was weak through the flesh, through the, the carnal, the fleshy. Jah sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. So when, when we say that Christ took on I and I blackness or Africanness, let's understand what that really means. On the outer level, Christ took on our racial identity. You know, but on the inner level also, he took on with that this nature of sinful flesh. So if we accept that Yeshua is black, is African, is Ethiopian in his complexion and woolly hair, we must also accept that we, apart from him, you understand, are sinful flesh. And for and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. So to get over and get past that um, systemic anomaly, so to speak, you know, and this systemic anomaly, that, you know, this fallen nature of, of black humanity, we need Yeshua HaMoshiach, we need Jesus Christus, we need His Word, we need, we need that law of the Spirit of the life in Christ Jesus that the righteousness of the law, that the righteousness of Torah, you know, the righteousness, the true righteousness that's embedded in Torah might be fulfilled in us. So he did this for us. He did this for I and I and I. All right? We need to receive it. Who walk not after the flesh. We don't walk after the flesh, after the carnal mind but after the Spirit, after the Memphis Caduce, after the Word and the teaching of His Majesty, as in John chapter 6. Look at John chapter 6 and study John chapter 6. Pay attention to John 666. Mm -hmm. That's a very interesting 666 in the Bible right there. So pay, you know, pay attention to that right there. But in John chapter 6, he's talking about eating his flesh. Mm-hmm. He's talking about drinking his blood. And the people think, he's using a metaphor. He's using a verbal hieroglyph, but many of the people think that it was some cannibalism. But he explains to them that the, that, that the words he speaks are spirit, right, and they're life. That the word is spirit and it is life. In the Bible, in, in the letter, it's dead. He is dead. It's only when you read it with the spirit of Jah in you and you receive it in and through Christ does this dead word here become living spirit. You're saying living spirit. Now, there's a conflict of the spirit with the flesh. There's a conflict between the two. Right? Galatians speaks about it in chapter 5, verses 16 to verse 18. Verse 5 here says in Romans chapter 8, verse 5, it says, For they that are after the flesh, those who follow the flesh, those who are still unregenerated, though they may say I'm Rasta, Rastafari, but those who are ungenerated, that means not born again in spirit and in truth, to the Father, through Yeshua, you have been, do mind the things of the flesh. They mind the things of the flesh and they judge by appearance, they judge by the outer, because they, they can't see anything else. You know, and they can't perceive anything else. In a sense, they are spiritually blind. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, those who are after the things of the Spirit will say, oh, I don't know, I can't really judge that. You know, because they perceive more. You see that there's more there. That, yeah, you see what you see on the outer, on the flesh, but something in your spirit perceives that there's more to it than just on the outer level. You understand? Those are those who walk after the Spirit. You understand? For to be carnally minded is death. You know what I'm To be carnally minded, to be fleshy minded. You know, I know Rastafari and even in the Nyabingi, there's a lot of the chants um, of the Nyabingi and the Rastafari that, that, that chant down the carnal mind. You know what I'm saying? We don't want, I don't want no carnal mind. You know what I'm saying? But that's, that's a good sentiment. But, but how do we overcome that carnal mind is in the teaching of His Majesty and the testimony of Yeshua HaMoshiach, the living Word, learning this and living it. 
But see, if we don't learn it, how can we live it? The overs, that's why His Majesty says education is the key. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. That, that is the key right there, is life and peace. Life and peace is only when we are spiritually minded. But the carnal mind is enmity. The carnal mind is hatred. The carnal mind is a hater. Carnal mind is a hater against Jah and the things of Jah. The carnal mind hates that. And see, when you really become conscious and you really start to examine and recognize yourself, you know, and you start to look and, and you, see, you begin to see those things in yourself, and, and, and that's what then helps you to focus more on prayer and focus more on the, the way, the truth, and the life because you begin to realize the reality of it for yourself. You know the truth for yourself because the carnal mind is enmity against Jah. The carnal mind is a hater against Jah, for it is not subject to the law, the Torah of Jah. It's not subjected to the law of God, neither indeed can be. I remember reading this. I had to meditate upon this. That's wow, because the carnal mind is not subject to the law of Jah. It's, you know, it's almost like, like those folks that when you talk about spiritual things, they just don't get it. You talk about the Bible, and they just don't get it. They don't feel it. And, and, and you're and you bringing out more proof and all. And, and they so, but what you don't get is what the teaching of His Majesty says right here. And if you get this, then you'll recognize it, and then there's peace. Then you have peace, and then you have life, because you recognize every man has a right to decide his own destiny. So if those ones have decided that, you understand, I must separate from that. You understand? I I'm still will love them in Christ and through the Moshiach, and, and, and hope and pray that they see the truth for themselves. But I must separate from that. You know, I must be separate. You understand? To be caduce. Verse 8. Chapter 8, verse 8. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Those who are in that fleshy state of mind. You understand? Not saying that if we are in flesh and blood, you have to understand the context and the content of what's being said here. So then they that are in the flesh, in the carnal mind, cannot please Jah. So if we try to please Jah from our carnal, you understand, misinterpretation of Rasta and Rastafari, we are not pleasing Jah. We are not pleasing to Jah. But ye are not in the flesh. You are not in the carnal mind if you're in the teaching of His Majesty and His Christ. But in the spirit, but in the manifest. If so be, if it, if, if, it, if it be so, that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If it is that God's Spirit is dwelling in you. And, and see, that's the key, that, that if so be. When he says, if so be. So you have to really recognize, you have to check this out. And this is the root of the Tawahido, what we call the Tawahido, and we call the Ritua Hymenot. You understand? Or some would interpret it as the Orthodox faith, but the correct living faith. You understand? In the new name, Rastafari, Rastafari, right? So he says that, if so be that the Spirit of God, now how does the Spirit of God dwell in us? Through the dwelling and the indwelling of the Word of God in our faith. You understand? Know Hitching our faith, our imminent to Him who is the Amen, to Yeshua HaMoshiach, Revelation 3, verse 14. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If anyone doesn't have the Spirit of the Moshiach, if you don't have the Spirit of Christ and His kingly character, and this is where we have to check on ourselves out first, you know what I'm saying? And then also have to check out, out our brother man, or one who we call our brother man. Not judging against them, but that's why we have to check ourselves first. You see, when we check ourselves first, we sort of recognize some things in there that we really know ain't right. You know, we ask the Almighty in Christ to have mercy on us, and we strengthen, we overcome that. That will help us in dealing with our brother or sister who, who has come across a fault or has come across an error in spirit and in truth, if so be they are willing. If not, separate. And if Christ, if Christos, if the anointed be in you, be in you. You're not saying if you call yourself a churchgoer, 
You understand? If you call yourself a Christian, no. If Christ, if Yeshua, if Christos be in you, the body is dead. The body is dead because of Chatiyat. The body is dead because of sin. But the spirit of life because of righteousness. In other words, the body now has the spirit of life because of Christ who is I and I righteousness. But it is dead, you know what I'm saying? It is dead to Chatiyat. It is dead to sin. Verse 11, but if the spirit of him that raised up Iesus, I think this is significant. You need to underline it. I've got a marker right here. I'm going to underline it myself where it says, I'm underlining the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. That, that's the key thing right here. And we can understand what his majesty said in, in the interview where he did not deny his divinity in and through Christ. You understand? You have to understand that right there. But he was recognizing, you understand, as an example, the way he is walking that way, being witness to his salvation, to Yeshua HaMoshiach. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yeshua, so, so, so there's a spirit of the one who raised up Yeshua from the dead dwell in you. Now, a lot of folks think that Jesus raised himself up. No, the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken. The word quicken mean to, means to give life to. An old English kind of statement, quicken. Shall also quicken, shall also give life to your mortal, your mortal bodies. Shall give life to your mortal. What kind of bodies do we have? Mortal. His match says, I am a man. I am mortal. I will be preceded uh, by the, the coming generation. I'll succeeded by the coming generation, the next generation. You understand? Your mortal bodies by his spirit. By his spirit that does what? That dwelleth in you. So his spirit is dwelling in us, but our bodies are still mortal. Now, anybody who run around saying, see, his majesty didn't say, oh, I'm a man and I'm immortal. No. That, that would be foolish to not be against the way of Christ. But instead, it seemed like a weakness. It seemed like a, a disacknowledgement. But it was a reaffirmation of the teaching of God and Christ, the testimony of Christ and the word of God that we have evidence of right here. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, so shall also give life to your mortal bodies, your mortal bodies, by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So his spirit is dwelling in us, but we still have mortal bodies. Ain't that something? But, but it says that the same one who raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken these mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in us. Therefore, brethren, therefore, brethren, and when we say brethren, it includes sisterin and includes mothers according to Yeshua HaMoshiach's own words. That's the first level of title. We don't go past that to try to be an empress or let somebody deceive you into being the empress. You are a sister. You are a daughter of God. You are a daughter of Ethiopia. It says, therefore, brethren, we are debtors. We are debtors. We have a debt. You know what I'm saying? We are debtors not to the flesh, not to the fleshy life that we were living before we were born again. We're not debtors to the flesh, to live after the flesh, to keep living according to the flesh and, and, the, and the things that we regarded as being something when we still were in darkness, when we still were in ignorance, when we did not know Jah or know Yeshua, Yeshua HaMoshiach. Verse 13, For if ye live after the flesh ye shall die. If you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify, do mortify, that means put to death the deeds of the body, ye shall live. The deeds of the body, ye shall live. You know what I'm saying? And speaking about the eternal life. You know what I'm saying? Because remember, there's the first death and there's the judgment. And then there's the second death and those before the second that die the second death are, 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 are damned, are doomed, you understand, to, 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 that, to that judgment. Some people say, no, it's not, because, it, because there's people. 
You know what I'm saying? There's no Holy Spirit there. It's their own ideas. You know what I'm saying? It's not verified or attested to by many witnesses like this word is. Now, the full result of the gospel, now, we, we, we gave you that uh, kind of, well, not background, but kind of forward, because this word right here is the whole point when we speak of becoming as little children. You understand? The key link, because Christ now, we, we check Christ's word here, bless other peacemakers, for they should be called the children of John, the children of God, and we checked out this word right here. You understand? Except ye humble yourselves and become as little children. We have to humble ourselves and become as little children. Now, here, Hawadi of Arlo says this. Here's where he speaks on that we as mitmenon, as those who admit and have faith in the King of Kings and his Christ, have faith in God and his Christ based on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E, in spirit and in truth. We are sons daughters as well, and ears, and ears, know we are children, to say sons and daughters, whatever happened to sons and daughters, you know what I'm saying, see when we, are son, when we become sons and daughters, guess what, then we can be, truly be brothers and sisters, but we start out trying to be emperors and kings and all this kind of stuff, that's confusion, and that has not worked and is still not working out, it's a nostalgia, it's a feel good measure, but it's a feel-good measure in ignorance. You know, since time that illumination, light shine on that. So we as Mitmanon, we are sons and daughters and ears. We are ears to a great legacy, a spiritual legacy. Galatians 4 and 4 has a link on that as well. But verse 14, Romans chapter 8, verse 14. For as many as are led, or are led, are guided by the Spirit of God, by the Spirit of Jah. They are the sons of God. They're the sons of Jah. That's how you can recognize yourself and your neighbor. You understand? Are you led by the Spirit of God? And that Spirit of God, does it affirm and verify this Word of God? Not that it's the Spirit of God in your own imagination, you understand, or your own delusion, but is the Spirit of God based on the Word of God. And if you're led by the Spirit of God, then you are a son or a daughter of God. You see the world trying to make people become gods and goddesses. They're like, you're a god and you're a goddess. That's a, that's a big delusion right there. Think about it. Of course people say, I have said ye are, what? Ye are what? Children of God. I say ye are gods. Ye are gods. We are children of God. To the world, and to those who don't admit and accept Yeshua HaMashiach, to them we are like gods. You understand? To them, but not to ourselves. We're not gods to ourselves. That's a delusion. Get off of that. Get off of that, 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 that trip right there, for real. You understand? Because you, you keep falling for it. Verse 15 says, For ye, for we, have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Bondage again to be afraid or in fear. But ye, but we have received, have Kabbalah, Makebel, the spirit of adoption. You heard that? The spirit of adoption. Verse 15, Romans 8, verse 15. We have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. See, the Spirit must be a witness with our spirit. That's what the Tawahid or Mawahad. The Spirit be a witness with our spirit that we are children. All right? That we are ch So what kind of little children are we? We are children of God. You know what I'm saying? We are children of God. So, let's put this up here. Children. We are children. Right? Of Jah. And that means son and daughter. Not empresses and kings and 
all this kind of wild stuff. You know what I mean? Because, you know, the next thing we can say is, where's your kingdom? You know what I'm saying? Where's your minister of state? Where's this and that? There is an order to the kingdom. You see, but some are in ignorance of that. So they don't know that. You understand? And ignorance of the law is no excuse. Ignorance of Torah, ignorance of it. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are children of God, children of Jah. And if children, if we are truly children of Jah, then there's an inheritance. And so when we speak about our divine heritage, we're speaking about an inheritance. Don't you get it? Ear, heritage, heritage, inheritance. So the word is telling us right here the glory of his majesty, the B-I-B-L-E. And if children, if we are truly children, if we humble ourselves and we are children, then we are ears. Ears of God, ears of Jah, and joint ears with Christ. So we are ears of the Father and we are co-ears with Yeshua HaMoshiach. We're joint ears with Christ. We're joint ears with the Messiah. If so be, that, that phrase again, if so be that we suffer with him, that we suffer with, that we may be also glorified together. So if we are children of God and joint ears of the Moshiach, it's not like saying that there's always, um, there's always so-called, quote, peace and love in that, in that um, ignorant sense, you understand, or that common sense. But there is suffering, you understand, but, but that suffering is not suffering for, like the world, like the world, or for worldly things, you understand, but it's suffering for righteousness sake, for the truth sake. Because many men and people, many friends, many ones that you thought would get it, uh, you, you, you know, some of the testimonies that even certain brothers and sisters have already um, shared with I and I. You know, sometimes they're a little shocked that these things are happening, and then we have to go through these verses. You understand? Go through these verses because ones have to be reminded that says that anyone who seeks to live godly, you understand, will, will, will suffer. You understand? We'll suffer. We'll, 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 we'll go through these situations. Even Bob Marley, when he says, I and I is a wheeler. I and I is sufferer. You see here the Rastafari speaking about I and I is sufferer. We, we joy in Jah. We joy in his way, but we go through suffering in this world because we're in the world, but not of the world. Because those in the world are under the law of sin and death. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and they have an enmity, a hatred. Whether they are conscious of it or whether they are not conscious of it, you also have a hatred to those who seek to do the will of Jah and truly are doing it. It becomes so very apparent. They have no problem, you understand, with this so-called Rastaism and this, is, this Reggaeism. And, 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 and they don't have a problem with that, you understand. They have a problem, you understand, with truth and rights when we start to speak and act on I and I truth and rights. Now, right here is a very interesting portion. Well, we talked on this one before about the creation, and there's much more to this particular chapter that I would strongly suggest and highly recommend that you read um, and study a little bit more. But let's just continue with this point for a moment because it's speaking about the creation. Rastafari always spoke of the creation, the iration, the creation. Here in Romans chapter 8, it speaks of the creation delivered from suffering. So there's a deliverance. There's a deliverance. There's an end to this. You know what I'm saying? And death, both suffering and death, cometh to an end. The world will laugh at this. Oh, no, that's always been, it's always been the way it has been, and it's always like that. The scriptures say that's foolish. They don't even know how they know. You know what I'm saying? Their science, their evolution theories, false gods are faulty. You know what I'm saying? They keep changing, updating every day. They don't know. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're trying to find out, but when they find out the truth, you know what I'm saying, and it doesn't reflect their lie, you know what I'm saying, they basically don't love the truth. And we know what the word says. John sends on them a strong delusion because they did not receive a love of the truth. The creation is to be delivered from suffering and death and is kept 
is kept, is protected for the children of God, for the sons of Jah. For I reckon, Hawari Apollo says right here, that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. With the glory which shall be revealed in I and I. That's a beautiful meditation right there. Verse 18. Because you have to read this and, 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 and you have to receive this. You have to be able to reckon, to be able to account that the sufferings of this present time, both one's personal sufferings and the sufferings in creation, you know what I'm saying, of this present time and this present age, they are not worthy to be compared with the glory with the glory which shall be revealed in us. His Majesty says, on my part, I glory in the Bible. So the Bible shows I and I where we've been, shows us where we're at, you understand, and shows I and I where we should go and where we will go if we remain faithful and true and where the others will go if they do not remain faithful and true. You understand? But that's, that's their choice. Verse 19 for the earnest expectation of the creature, speaking of the creature, the animals, creation, we, we, we hear about the, you know, extinction of this species of animal and this rare sort of animal here. We see what's happened in Africa and what still goes on in Africa with the killing, the poaching of animals, the killing of elephants for their tusks, all of these things which are going on right now for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Now, that, now, now that, is, that is very important. It's saying that the creatures, all these creatures that we see when we watch uh, like the BBC or the news or something like that, and we see like what's happening to the animals in, in, in Africa, you know what I'm saying, in other parts of the world, but, but a whole lot is going on in Africa. It's just so, so big, a continent. You understand, so big a continent, we're not there. That they're, they're killing the elephants, taking the tusks, and in, in, in some cases, or a lot of the cases, they're going to China because they worship and have a fetish, you know, with the whole tusk thing and everything. Um, look what this verse is saying right here in, in chapter 8, verse 19. It's saying that the earnest expectation of the creature that those creatures which are being massacred and slaughtered, even and especially in Africa, waiteth, they are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of Jah. They're, they're waiting for I and I to grow up, you know, and to do the will of God in Christ. They are waiting. You know, we look around and say, oh, why they do that? We Babylon on about Babylon. You know what I'm saying? Instead of doing I and I Father's will, and when we see the, 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 the dead bodies and carcasses of the creatures, you know what I'm saying? Um, and even the two-legged creatures, too, they were waiting as well for the manifestation of the sons of God. And instead we're playing around with these nonsense so-called things, calling I and I woman empresses and, and, and out of order and the sons not doing their proper job, you know what I'm saying, in headship, Carrying a ras, you know, saying, as 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 a as a as a bossy thing, but 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 not conforming to the image of his beloved son, our Savior Yeshua Hamashiach. It says that the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature, for these creatures were made subject to vanity, all that nonsense, killing a whole elephant just to take the tusk. That's vain. That's vanity. The creature was made subject to this, this, this sort of abuse, this sort of injustice, not willingly, not because, it, it, not because they want to die, you understand, and be killed for their tusk. You know, how we like somebody to, to kill you and, and pull out your teeth? You understand? I, I mean, you'd be like, just the teeth? Yeah, just throw your body, just want your teeth. You understand? But it says that the creatures were made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope, in an expectation. What's the expectation? The manifestation of the sons of God, the sons of Jah. And so who are the children of Jah? Are we not the children of Jah? Are we living up, Yovazan, to the King of Kings and his Christ? Are we just doing what we want to do? Are we making our wills obedient? Time is of the essence. 
Verse 21, because the creature itself also shall be delivered. The creatures are going to be delivered from the bondage of corruption. So the Bible calls all of that the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty. The glorious what? Liberty of the children of God. Not the Statue of Liberty, not the fraud of July, but the glorious liberty. The glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Do you know that? Did you know that? Well, you, well, you need to know that, that the, that the um, whole creation, the entire creation is groaning. The earth is groaning. The, the, the animal life, the creation life is groaning and they're travailing in pain all together until now. Can, can you hear? You know what I'm saying? Can you see it? Can you perceive it? And not only they, it's not only the creatures, but it's ourselves also, which have the first fruits, the first fruits of the Spirit, the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, waiting for that adoption, waiting for, for I and I to truly be sons and daughters in spirit and in truth, accepted by the Father in Yeshua. You have been stop skylarking. You have been half-stepping. To wit, the redemption of the body. So we have the first fruits of the Spirit. So we need to continue to labor towards the harvest. If you understand what the first fruits are to the harvest, then the redemption of the body, the adoption, the 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 the, the immortality swallowing up this mortality, life swallowing up this death matrix, you know what I'm saying, which is the sin, that, which is a systemic anomaly, you know what I'm saying, that causes death and, and destruction. For we are saved, we are saved by hope, by expectation, but hope, that expectation that is seen is not hope. You know what I'm saying, see, some people think that what they look at and what they're able to see is, is what they can hope for. They, they figure they can't hope for anything if they can't see it. That's because they don't know the meaning of the word hope. They're on some intellectual dope. You know what I'm They don't know the true, what, what hope really means in the context of it. You know what I'm They don't know the logic of the word. For we are saved by hope. By hope is expectation. But expectation that is seen is not expectation. Hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth why doth he yet expect it? What a man seeth, why does he hope for it? That's foolishness. But if we hope, if we expect for that we see not, you know, we look at, you know, so we're not looking with our carnal eyes, we're seeing it with our spiritual mind. You know what I'm saying? But if we hope for that we see not, then we do with patience. That's the key word. Need to underline that word too, with patience. We do with patience. Remember, Revelation says that patience, patience is the faith of the saints. And, and the waiting don't mean that we are lazy, that we are not about our and our father's business, but it means that in spirit and in truth we have life and peace. And we're working towards that, but we're not, we're not allowing ourselves to get burnt out, to burn our and ourselves out. You understand? We do with patience wait for it. The spirit and indwelling intercessor. This section, these two verses. So likewise, the spirit, the manifest, also helpeth I and I infirmities. It also helps I and I weak, weakness. You know what I'm Whatever we are weak in, whatever we are infirm in, or whatever sickness, it's that spirit of life in Christ Yeshua. To the glory of Abba, Abba Kedus that helpeth our infirmity, infirmities. For we know, we know not what we should pray for as we ought. You ever been just, just praying on it in, in, in prayer and there's so much you want to say and communicate and sometimes you don't even know, you know, what or really what to say or how to say it sometimes in prayer. If, you, if you've prayed, you know. Some people don't pray because they think, well, before they pray, they don't even know. But get this. 
for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. We don't know what we should pray for in the proper way that we should pray for it, but the spirit, the, the irate, if you please, the menses itself maketh intercession. The spirit itself maketh intercession for us, for I and I, with groanings which cannot be uttered. You know, sometimes you, you, you're praying and you're going through a situation and you're like, I mean, you're just making sounds almost. You don't really even know how to like, you know, but still you pray. And he that searcheth the heart, he who searches our consciences. It's like in ancient Egypt they show the heart being weighed in that same sense. He that searcheth the heart knoweth what the mind, what the mind of the spirit May, you know, what is the mind of the spirit? So the, so the spirit has a mind. And he that searcheth the heart, he knows. When we say, John knows. When we used to say, John knows. John knows. Because when I'm, you can't even express it. John knows. Because he knows. He searcheth. He, he that searcheth the heart knoweth what the mind of the spirit, what is the mind of the spirit. Because he maketh intercession for the Kedusan for the holy ones, for the ones set apart, the saints of the Kedusan. Not these false saints we hear about in counterfeit Christianity, but the true saints are those set apart. Even I and I are saints in the true scriptural context if we are set apart. You understand? If we are set apart, if we remember the Sabbath to keep it set apart, you understand? That's the beginning, you understand, of that sainthood, you understand, or that Kedusana being set apart. So, because he maketh intercession for the saints, he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of Jah. According to the will of Jah. You ever try to pray about something, but you don't know how to put it in really words, you try it, so forth and so on, but, um, but, but you just you, you meditate and you, in the spirit, and then things just work out, you know, in a way that you didn't really pray for, but you, you're happy to see the results. It's just an example. It's just an example of it. You understand? Now, the unfailing purpose of Jah is through the Wengel, is through the good news. The unfailing purpose of the King of Kings and his Christ is through the good news. We have to recognize that. We must recognize that. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love Jah, that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. And that, now that's a key right there in the gospel of his majesty. Are we truly called? I mean, you might be rust, uh, this or that, but, but have you really been called? Did you really receive a call or you did it because somebody else was doing it? You, you know, that don't mean that you cannot receive it, but did you receive a call? Is there really a call? Did you pick up the phone when somebody called or you just picked up the phone and said hello and heard the dial tone? It says, and we know that all things work together. All things work together. They might not be good things or whatever, but everything works together for good to them that love Jah. See, so, you know, people talk about the love of God, so forth and so on, but you don't see all the things working together for good for them. You know, so, something must be wrong. Either the word is wrong or they're wrong. I will trust the word because we know that all things work together for good to them that love Jah, to them who are called according to his purpose. Now, it's interesting in the scripture how the scripture connects the love of God with the commandment of God and the testimony of Jesus Christos, you know, where it says in John, John speaks about that. We'll go into, I think it's the epistles of John where he speaks about that, that the love of God is to keep his commandment to keep his commandments, you know, you know what I'm saying? So, so there is a, some people say it's unconditional. No, there are conditions. The condition needs be met to be in, 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 the, in, the, in the true sense of the, of the contract or the covenant. It says to them who are called according to his purpose. Have you been called to do what you want to do? Are you doing your will, doing whatever you will? Or are you seeking to learn and to do his will? That's his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, whom he already knew from before, 
he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. So we must be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, that he might be the firstborn among who? Among many brethren. So Yeshua, Jesus Christos, he is the firstborn, and I 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 are the many, many brethren and sisters and mothers as well. And I'll make that connection from Matthew where he says, who is my brother? And he says, one who does the will of my father, the same is my, is my brother and, and, and mother and sister. He has those three right there. So he is the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, because we have one Father, Abba Kedus, Kedus Abatachin, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. So, so there is a sense of predestination here. You understand? Those he also called, and whom he called, those who he called, them he also justified. He made them righteous. You know what I'm saying? Or he brought to them the consciousness of Christ, his son, whom he, glor whom he justified, them he also glorified. What then, what shall we then say to these things? I mean, what can we say to all these things? You know what I'm saying? Being, being, being chosen in such a way. What can we say to such things? If Jah be for us, who can be against us? So whenever we babble on about Babylon, or circumstances and situations outside of the world, it also shows a lack of, 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 of good faith with the King of Kings according to his word here. Because what shall we then say to these things? If Jah, if God, be for us, who can be against us? He that spareth not his own son, Jah didn't spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, for I and I all, as Beta Israel. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Remember, we are ears. If we are children, we are ears. If we are pretending to be kings and queens and like, like empresses or something like that, that means we have our own kingdom somewhere, maybe, or we think so. You know what I'm saying? He that spareth not his own son, but delivered him up for I and I all, how shall he not with him also freely give I and I and I all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Who shall lay anything? Only the foolish, worldly haters of God and Christ lay anything to the elect of God. Listen to what it says. Verse 33. Acts and the Acts, Romans chapter 8, verse 33. It says, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Who shall lay anything to the charge of the elect of God? Who? It is God that justifies. It's Jah that justifies. So who can lay anything to the charge of the elect of God? Who? Which one of them? Which one of these foolish people who want to talk, talk uh, about the king of kings in ignorance or in hatred. You understand? Who can lay anything to the charge of Jah's elect? That doesn't trouble us. They are already troubled. It is Jah that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christos, is the Moshiach that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for I and I and I? Because of the order of Melchizedek, Yeshua HaMoshiach, he is I and I high priest. You understand? He, he is I and I high priest. And, and Hebrews explains that fully for us as Hebrews, as Israelites, as Beit Israel, as elect Rastafari and Ethiopian Hebrews explains perfectly that Yeshua HaMoshiach, he is I and I high priest. And this is why him being at the right hand of Jah is there to make intercession for I and I and I. So we as the mitmenon, you know, saying the true and the faithful, as the Rastafari mitmenon, we as the mitmenon are secure. Are secure, not scared. We're secure. You know, saying we have to recognize this and manifest this. 
Who shall separate I and I from the love of Christ? Who shall separate I and I from the love of Christ in his kingly character? Who shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Question, who, what? As it is written, for thy sake, for the eye's sake, for the Father's sake, for Christ's sake, I and I are killed. You know what I'm saying? We're killed all the day long. You know what I'm saying? The haters of Jah, because we love Jah, they, they kill us every day. They murder us every day. We're killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, Hawadi Apollo say, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. In all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. To him who loved I and I, who is the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. Moa, Anbesa, the Imma, Negeda, Yehuda, Edamawi, Haila, Shalase, Siyuma, Egeziabi, Her, Nugusa, Neges, Ze, Ethiopia. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us, separate I and I from the love of Jah, from the love of God, which is in Christos Iesus Getachin. Amen and amen. Now, my brothers and sisters, we need to meditate on that. We really need to meditate on that. This is just affirming, once again, the adoption. We speak about, well, what is the adoption? What is it to become little children? You know what I'm saying? What is the proper order of our Father's house? Once again, we'll show you this on a tight view right here. What is the proper order of I and I Father's house? Put this on pause if you can. Hopefully you can read this right here. We have one emperor or king of kings, and one queen of queens. Anything else than that is out of order. And you all already know, if something is out of order, then it does not work. Stay tuned. Shalom. Rastafari.